my lovelies, here we are. Um, this follows on from my telling you about this great offer on QVC. This video may be after. Um, I don't know how much longer the 75 mils are going to be available or at what price. So it may have gone up in price since the August um, launch and exclusivity, but it's worth a look. Um, 75 mil, you can always get the standard 32 mil. Um, and I have the shade medium usually, but because I've got colour, I've got neutral medium, which is more a beige yellow tone and just works for me. So we've done that. That was what the previous video was about, but I am going to put some makeup on and have a chat with you. Um, because I've got the colour, I've rooted out my It Beauty Book so I can use the medium tan and the tan rich for concealer just so it all works together. So I'm just going to put some of the medium tan just under the eyes. I'm going to mix the two shades together just to get the right, the right match. And I'll blend it all together when I've mixed them. And this is going to be tan rich. So We've had rainy days. We've got a lovely sunny day actually today. Cloudy, but the sun's there, there's blue sky. Betty is, there she is. Betty's with us. I hope you're all well. I've had some fabulous comments. They've been an absolute delight um, to read them. So thank you for all your lovely comments. I've got a fabulous, wonderful Brenda blemish on the end of my nose. She's just gradually got bigger and bigger over the last few days. Right, I'm going to apply, I haven't used this for ages, it's my favourite eyes to mesmerise colour from CT, which is Charlotte Tilbury. And it's Mona Lisa. I love this. It's just a glorious... Brown, mink, mauve, I don't know what colour you'd call it, but I, I just love the tone. And I often try and see if I can find that sort of tone elsewhere in shadow. And I've never seen it sort of replicated. And the trouble is, unless you can actually physically see a shade sometimes, you can't really guess from a swatch on a, you know, laptop. So I'm just going to whack that over the eyelid. Not particularly tidy. Then I'm just going to blend with a different, different brush. Just blend it up, soften it down. So TV. We always talk about TV, don't we? Um, I saw a clip of Death on the Nile, Kenneth Branagh's offering. It's coming in December. Christmas I think time um, his take on Death on the Nile his take on Hercule Poirot um, I have to I've not seen Murder on the Orient Express so Branagh's Murder on the Orient Express so I can't comment on really Branagh and his Poirot from the clip I saw of Death on the Nile I was kind of a bit hmm about it because it's already been done with Peter Ustinov and it was such an incredible film and cast. I mean, it was just star studded, you know, Ustinov, David Niven, Betty Davis, Maggie Smith, Simon McCorkendale, Mia Farrow. Um, oh, gosh, they were just I'm just looking at Angela Lansbury, that fabulous actress, Olivia Hussey, that played Juliet just it was just packed and it was just perfect and it just seemed to fit and I'm quite partial to Peter Usenoff and although Poirot literary Poirot probably wasn't quite as Usenoff looked and played him I just think it was such a good representation of Poirot um, and the bit I saw of Kenneth Branagh and of course you hear the voiceover and it, it did just feel like somebody was doing an impression and I know it kind of is an impression but 
it felt a bit more forced um and i don't know i just don't know if he's over egged the pudding i think the beauty with christy is if you play it softer rather than going the dark side it seems to work as soon as people really go deep and dark and faff too much with it it almost loses its suspense or you know it's just too too much for the subtleties that christy put through her stories so i'm not i'm not 100 percent certain how i feel about um death on the nile and again there's a great cast i did spot um i think don french um, Gal Gadot, who's absolutely beautiful. Um, I can't think who else I spotted within it, but yeah, an all-star cast again. But I'm not, I don't know, I'm not certain. Not certain. He'd have been better doing something that hadn't already been done, I, I feel, rather than doing Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile, because of course you're going to have comparisons. When he's got so much more out there, he could have done, there's a lot of Poirot um, to work with. Anyway, um, I'm going to use the Colour Chameleon Dark Pearl pencil from Charlotte Tilbury, because it's quite a good um, match for the Mona Lisa. And I'm doing the lash line and sort of capturing the water line at the same at the same time. So I saw that. Um, I think it's October. I think it's October, September, October. Netflix have um, done Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca with Kristen Scott Thomas. Um, it looks as though Kristen Scott Thomas is playing Mrs Danvers, which I'm sort of like, mm, yeah, I could see that working. Um, again, I do like the Laurence Olivier, Joan Fontaine, Hitchcock's version of Rebecca, um, George Sanders in it as well. And I've seen other versions. I actually saw a stage production of Rebecca with um, Nigel Havers and Laurence Olivier's daughter, Tamsin, was playing the second Mrs. De Winter because you never have a name for the second Mrs. De Winter because Rebecca is, you know, everything. Um, and it was awful. <laughs> it was just awful. Um, more the fact that Nigel Havers just, you never feel he plays anything other than himself. And it, he was he was Maxim de Winter, and he was very very weak. I have to say, I, I really didn't enjoy it at all. Um, but I do like the film. But I just thought oh, that might that might work quite nicely. So there's that potentially could be promising. And then I think I've spoken before that they've read and Blythe Spirit, which I'm almost feeling myself tensing as I say it, because what I've seen looks absolutely diabolical. Even though Dame Judy, the Dench, is in it, I, I think this one might be a bit of a turkey, just saying. But how you could ever think you could, you know, how you ever, how could anybody ever think, I know, let's do Blythe Spirit, when you have the definitive Rex Harrison, Constance Cummings, you've got Margaret Rutherford, just Kay Hammond, no, no. just simple as that, you know, just stop it. Um, so I, I certainly won't be rushing to see that, but I'd be interested, your thoughts on remakes and things, whether there's anything out there you think is actually better second time round. Um, sometimes people delve deeper into things, I think, when it's the second time round, but I am a bit of a traditionalist. I do struggle when you hear about remakes. I think it's a little bit like when they change the endings with books, and they do that quite a lot with Agatha Christie's. And I don't understand. If there's a definitive ending in the book, what do you gain by changing it? Do you think you've been clever playing with the audience? The audience the audience wants to be played with until the very end and then they want the ending to be exactly what it is. Um, and that loses me because you just get infuriated. You know, 
why why do that so let me know about your your thoughts on people yeah remaking things and changing are you a traditionalist like me do you get cross and shout at the television right i'm going to use maybelline falses mascara which i really really love really love this and it's gone over the l'oreal lash primer so that's potential tv we had started watching lock is it lock key l-o-c-k-e on netflix which is about a family that move into this rather bizarre house that has various doors and only certain keys fit but also the keys are magical and it the premise was great and we we've got to about four or five episodes but we just i don't think we're committed enough to it we can't connect with the um the cast actually the kids in it are quite good but a couple of the adults it's almost irritating and we were both a bit you know shall we watch this and it was sort of yeah put it on but we are watching um shameless which was a tv series in the uk um that really took off about a family on the housing estate i think in manchester and all their troubles now craig watched it i've never watched it I've, i know of it and i've seen clips so i know the actors the characters but i've never actually watched the series i think it's about eight or nine and we just thought we'd we'd watch those and we've really got into watching it it's, it's quite amusing actually and all the yes the things they get up to it's uh it's real life so we have been we have been watching watching that that was the sun bunny from Too faced and then i've got the elf highlighter which i'm still still working with you may remember i got this as a free gift when i got some things from elf and it's absolutely glorious that she just for you lynn i know you like a lot of highlighter maybe not and then blusher i think i'll use some beauty pie um, this is Daydreamer and it's a powder blush. Got a little bit of pink to it. So, um, Seagull News, um, Barry and Frida have fledged. They have gone. But, I don't know what's happened this year. It's quite amusing really. They've gone. They flew off. And I was a little bit, oh, Barry and Frida have gone. Not sure which was which, but one went before the other. So I was aware that there was just sort of Barry or Frida um, staying and then suddenly they'd both gone and I was a little bit, my heart sort of, um, you know, I hope, I hope it all goes well. And then a couple of mornings later, um, I was aware they were both back on the roof and I thought, oh, OK, then, you know, they've had a little flap around and they've come home. But they're flying off most of the day and then coming back just about every night and demanding that the parents feed them. And I think they get to a point where the parents are like, off, clear off. And they refuse to feed them, to teach them to go and look for food themselves. And they're obviously feeding, but they're still coming home to mum and dad. And it's also happening with um, some seagulls further up the roofs, a couple of neighbours along. Um, one of the baby seagulls keeps coming back. And I mean, when I say babies... I mean, they're, you know, they're the same size as the parents, but they're, they're coming home, which is quite sweet, really. So Barry and Frida, yes, um, they've, they've gone, but not quite. Uh, and it's quite nice to see them and hear them as well. Sometimes you can hear them. And I sort of open the window and just sort of have a little, hello, it's me. And you hear a little squeak or a squawk or whatever. Um we had we have some scaffolding up on the house because certain areas of the house even ladders you wouldn't want to climb up ladders so you have to have scaffolding and living by the sea is lovely but you do get quite a lot of damage from the salt in the air so you do have to stay on top of property maintenance let's be grown up and adult about this so we've got scaffolding up and uh, i'd gone out one afternoon and it's one of the tiny little finches 
that fly around and live in the hedges um, had obviously hit the scaffolding and I was a bit torn because I thought well has it come from the hedge at the front but there's so many of them around it's hard to tell where it had come from and then I was worried that if it flopped out again it would go on the road so I very carefully brought it back into the garden I thought I'll just put it somewhere dark and quiet and keep an eye on it put some water out and let it rest because if it's done because I couldn't see anything wrong with it once I picked it up its feathers and wings seemed absolutely fine and of course you've got to be so careful because they're so tiny that you know you just you've got to be really really it's fine with a seagull you've got a bit of something to grab hold of but with these I mean they are just literally feathers and little bones anyway I found a little space in the garden where it was dark and quiet and cool and I put some water out and I kept going to check and it had come out after about half an hour it had sort of come out but wasn't flying and of course I start to get a little bit panicky you know is it gonna is it hurt and then I went out and it had completely gone so hopefully it found its family ideally it would have been to put it back in a hedge but as I say I didn't know which hedge it had come from and the last thing I wanted was it to get run over so I just felt back of the house because there are some at the back as well that was the other thing but it was just nice to know and I, I was properly rooting through all the undergrowth to make sure it hadn't gone back into a little dark spot but no it had gone so I think it had just flown probably into the scaffolding and just stunned itself um, so that was the bird incident which you know we do have or I do appear to have a lot of birds that just sort of land in front of me and need a little bit of uh, TLC. Right, I'm going to use for the lips nothing too extravagant, I don't think. I'm not really a lip gloss person, but I do have some. This is Polite Lips. This was a Too Faced launch um, and it was PR and it's just a very sort of neutral pink on my lips. A little bit of shimmer, but we'll put that on. And what else have I got to tell you? We've had dolphins in the harbour itself, which have been lovely for people on holiday because it saved them having to book trips to go out and look at them. They came in a couple of nights and gave a lovely performance. So that's been nice. And they've been accompanying the ferries and things like that as well um, and really putting a show on which is nice because that's how you, you want people to see them which is in the wild doing what they do naturally um, but yes we've been very very lucky in in that respect anything else to tell you Betty's fine um, I think that's it I think that's all no more gossip we've done TV not really read anything um no that's all lovely people i will be back with another video soon thank you as ever for your fabulous messages um i've had some delightful reads that have made me laugh so much i've had to go back to them and read them again to make sure i've taken on board everything love hearing all the things that irritate you um a lot of people talking about bad manners that kind of thing um, but yes, some of them have properly made me laugh so much. It's like having a little, you can always imagine us all in a coffee shop having a good old chat about what really irritates us, but they have, they've been a joy. So I may do another video about some of your YouTube comments um, and just pick up on a few things because they have been an absolute delight to read. So thank you for taking the time um, to write your comments and I will be back um, in another video. I keep calling them videos. Do you, are they technically videos on YouTube? I mean, it's not like a video cassette video, but you know, I'm never never one for being up with the lingo, um, to be fair, but I call them videos, so you know what I mean. Right, I'll be back soon. Take care, bye for now.